already? Oh boy. It's always an adventure here. Daily. Adventure daily. Guys, we are about to embark on a pretty wild journey on none other than the Helix. Old reliable, man. Finally checked the oil for the first time since buying it. Never checked anything on this thing. And it was still plumb full of oil, still had a nice golden look to it. Come on, man, you can't beat it. Yeah, my truck registration expired. And I also don't have a trailer big enough or wide enough to fit what we're about to buy, which is none other than a Ural. Our trusty steed. Are you ready, kids? My eye. Captain. We're doing this. We were getting on the freeway for two hours. Come on, baby. My gosh about time we get off the highway but honestly i gotta give props to the helix because that was very manageable we had this thing up to 80 miles an hour i was able to cruise 70 comfortably this thing is just so versatile i love it filled up gas for like six dollars and now we are here this would literally almost cost me a hundred dollars round trip for gas in the tundra so i think this was a win-win but we are about 10 minutes away from the euro and I could not wait to see this thing. This deal just all kind of fell into my lap last second. I've wanted one of these for years, and I just kept saying to myself, if not now, when? I really want to get this so Diesel can come along on some of these adventures. It's got a seat on the back so Lex can come along, so we can all three travel, go camp, and yeah, I just think this is going to bring some awesome content, and we're just going to have a lot of fun on this. But man, this is a beautiful road we're on right here. Quite the change from the 70 miles an hour highway. Look at that freaking mansion over there. Jesus Christ. Got some money up here. That one maybe? Yeah, we have arrived. The steering dampener is right here. You can adjust this. So the reason is, is sidecar rigs, the bike is angled at like two degrees towards the sidecar so that when you are riding it, you're not fighting against it, right? You got your shovel, your jerry can. They call it the gear up model. So this was factory and this is factory. This is the spigot for the gas can. The full toolkit's still here and they give you pretty much a huge toolkit that can repair everything on the bike. There's some extra bulbs in here. Uh, I don't know why there's a cross in here, it's weird. In case you need to charge anything, this is the Euro charger. It just plugs in right there. This little place to keep your registration. Perfect. Carrying protection, whatever. Kickstart, in case you're gonna kickstart the bike. Four speed transmission on it. First, second, third are pretty much your everyday gears. And then fourth is if you're gonna hit the highway. Mm -hmm. And this will do about 65, but understand that that's about where it's maxed out. Yeah. Because you're talking a 750 pound bike here. Right. Other than that, just, if you want to get in it and we'll go. Let's do it. Right. While you're riding, these bikes 
You can go into left turns pretty quickly, but right turns, you as the rider are gonna to wanna to lean to the right. Okay. Her as the passenger, when you're in here, just hang on to this and lean to the right with him okay. in turns. The reason is, is the center of gravity will lift the right wheel off the ground. It's called flying the chair. Yeah, yeah. Totally normal, easy to do, but if you're not expecting it, it goes from driving a tractor to riding a motorcycle in the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So you guys don't get, you know, nervous about it. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Have you been riding for a while? Yeah. If you want to grab it, the motor's dead cold. Oh, okay. Um, I think just when you buy used bikes, I think that's a huge deal. For sure. Is somebody doesn't heat the motor up before you come and get yeah. it. Yeah. And this is fuel injected, you said. It is. Was that the first year in 2015? 2014 was. Okay. You're going to notice something. When you hit this, hear the fuel pump running? Yep. On most bikes, it'll cut off after a couple of seconds. This will just keep running and running and running. Really? So if you're going to turn it on, make sure you turn it on. I see. First lever. Oh. Okay. So I'll show you real quick. Simple as punch in, press forward. Go to reverse. That's convenient. Don't put it in reverse while going forward. Alright? Like, it'll lock you out of the gear. But I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Be deliberate in your shifts. Okay. So like when you're doing it going down the road, oh my bad, uh, just make sure that you're giving it, the, give it the beans. Yeah. You have a heel shift and a front shift if that's what you want to do. Most importantly, right here, this is the two-wheel drive lever. Okay. Put it in park, engage it in the two-wheel drive. To do that, you don't have to clutch in or anything, but you're going to pull out on the assembly and you're going to lift up hard going to move this lever back here and this drive shaft will engage okay because the way the see how the wheels here and here yeah this thing is only one going to track straight right okay so we took this to kentucky and did Wayne national forest and the daniel boom trail mm -hmm. we only used two-wheel drive once and it was when i got stuck nose down and had to get it out of a hole dude i'm telling you straight yeah. it's the only direction it's going but if you guys want to jump on. Yeah, so I'm good, we'll grab our helmets. A lot of people are going back to Santa. I have Cardos, and I didn't realize all the Cardos were made in Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet, when you're downshifting, let the speed reduce quite a bit because you're going to go to downshifting your car. It's just you got to wait for the speed. Okay. With no tack. I didn't see a tack on that either. Is that auto? Yeah. Alright. Well, just be careful. It'll be fine. Yeah, no, I've ridden a lot. Dude, this thing is wild. <laughs> Dude, this is so weird! <laughs> How does it feel? It is so sketchy. Oh, the heated grips are burning me out. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's got its quirks. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get top speed. Ah! <laughs> oh man. 
and the biggest thing I notice is this thing just floats all over the place. It's walking all across the road. I think that's just the nature of the beast, though. But yeah, I think we're gonna buy it, man. I don't know what else we could do to get close to this. I love the look of it. I think it's sweet. I think Diesel's gonna love it. Not be going anywhere in a hurry. So initial impressions right off the bat. This thing is built cheap. You can feel it in the way that it moves, the way that the engine sounds, the way that it shifts. This thing is straight out of China. There's a cult following for these bikes and I get the appeal. It's literally one of the only two wheel drive sidecar motorcycles on the market. That being said, you pay for it. And before I get too far ahead, I wanna give a shout out to the owner, Matt. He was a super nice guy, very informative, and he didn't have to let us go out on this joy ride, but he insisted. But this one was priced around the 10K mark, which is very good for a 2015. The current 22 gear up model goes for like 24 grand or something ridiculous. So I thought for less than half the price, I'll give it a shot. But even then, 10 grand is a lot of money. And what are you really getting for that? You're getting 1980s cheap Chinese technology. Now what the Ural derived from is very cool, but although it looks like that, it is nothing like the original Russian Ural. These things use some of the cheapest parts available. They are notorious for breaking down and just having their quirks is what they call it. And yes, this one definitely had its quirks. This thing's definitely a little sketchy. I swear your front wheel just lifted. <laughs> and once again, I could understand if the price was lower, but when you're spending over 20 grand for one of these brand new, I don't want any quirks. I don't want to have to work on this thing weekly. And at the end of the day, it's all about your intentions. What do you plan to do with this machine? And I really wanted this thing so I could bring Diesel along on some adventures. But man, I just don't want to find myself in the middle of nowhere on one of these bikes that I can't source parts for. Everybody says that you can fix it along the side of the road. What does that really mean? Unless you're carrying a box full of spare parts, I don't see that happening. But I think the idea is cool. The riding experience is definitely not for everybody. This thing is just wallering all over the road. I could have lived with all of the quirks if they just didn't pertain to reliability. The shifting. Apparently it's normal, but this thing grinded and tore through every single gear. It was rough. If the RPMs were up just even a little bit, it wasn't going into gear. The vibrations. This thing rattled like a 1950s John Deere tractor. But once again, if these things were just a little bit more reliable, I wouldn't care as much. I'd be willing to deal with all of the quirks if I had a little bit more confidence in the machine. Oh God. No, not right now. No, right now. Can we not crash it before we buy it? There we go, there we go. Tanner, Jesus Christ. Okay, okay, all right. So we got back from the first test ride. We talked about the bike some more and he offered to take me out on the ride to show me how to fly the sidecar. Little did he know I already did that with Lex. But I entertained it and I got to ride around on the sidecar for a bit. It was a cool experience. It definitely was a little weird being that low going 50 miles an hour with no control over what you're doing. But it was a cool experience. Like Alexis said, I think it was like comparable to riding in a roller coaster. But we swapped back and forth, flew the sidecar a little bit, and on the way home, it started bogging. Now right away, I just thought it was out of gas. I asked him how much gas is in it. And he's like, oh no, there's plenty of gas in there. And it kind of choked its way back to life rode a little bit further and then it just bogged down to a complete stop. It was still running though, which was weird. And then when Matt was riding it, it acted fine. We even managed to get all the way back to his house. And at that point, with the assumption that there was still gas in there based off what he had said, I kinda had a bad taste in my mouth over the whole riding experience. And then having issues when I was here, Matt kinda talked me out of it and we agreed that it just wasn't 
a good time. He invited us into his house for some refreshments, gave us a few local restaurant recommendations. And before we left, I did give him an offer and it was just a little bit lower than what he wanted. I thought it would just be cool to bring some content and I was willing to take the gamble on whatever was wrong with this thing. So we ended up riding the Helix to dinner, had an amazing meal. And he actually ended up sending me 20 bucks for gas for the wasted trip, which is almost what we spent in the Helix. So that was cool. We definitely didn't have to do that. But while we were eating, I got another message and he's like, dude, you will not believe it. I just went to the gas station. The thing was bone dry. I was like, and at this point, Lex and I were just going back and forth, like, what do we really want to do? Do we see ourselves traveling in this thing and wanting to depend on something like this, spend this kind of money? We had a few other options, which you may or may not see soon. So I was just teetering on the fence and leaning way on the side of just not getting it at all. But after we ate, we rode back to his house and he let us take it out for as long as we wanted. We kind of did one last shakedown and ultimately came to the final decision that it just wasn't for us. I know a lot of people say the top speed is 60, 65 miles an hour. I've even read forums, people saying they've had them up to 70, but I just can't imagine taking this thing on any great distance. Even on county roads where the speed limit is 50 miles an hour, it is just really fatiguing. And do I think I could have got used to it? Absolutely. I mean, this was my first hour ever spent riding with a sidecar, but just all of the vibrations, the characteristics of how it rode, the quirks, it's just more of a toy than a practical mode of transportation, which is what we are looking for as backup while we're traveling on the road. So ultimately it just didn't make sense for us. And I'm bummed out, man, I've always wanted one of these things. And I finally got to the point where I could get the chance to own one and it just was a big letdown. So I'm sure I will have some Ural enthusiasts that are watching this and I don't want to make this video about bashing it because I really would like to try another model, maybe one of the newer ones, Ural, hit me up. But to me, it really just is a toy. And for a lot of owners, I'm sure that's what they bought it for. For me, I was looking for something more practical and it just was not it. I will say I had a lot of fun. Thank you to Matt once again, super nice dude, super nice family. But it looks like the Ural just wasn't meant to be. So we loaded back up on the Helix, headed on down the interstate, and that is the story of the Euro. We do have something else in the works, so be sure to comment down below. What do you think we're gonna get? Whatever it is, it's with the intentions of bringing Diesel along, because I wanna share some of these adventures with my dog, and that's where this sidecar adventure started in the first place. It was all for him. So if you have any other ideas, recommendations, comments on the Euro, feel free to drop a comment down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, it really helps out the channel. And until the next video, live free and adventure daily.